Hey, and welcome to another episode of PeaceMag TV. In today's video for WordPress, we're going to be taking a look at some of the animation effects in Slider Revolution version 5. Now, this is the latest iteration of this very popular plugin for WordPress, and the animation features and just the way they've updated the interface has made it a lot easier to work with. Now, if you haven't seen my video on my first impression of Slider Revolution, I recommend checking that out. But this one today is going to take a look at some of the features we have available to us with the animation and all of the things that we can do with our slides. So let's take a look at what we have on offer. So I'm back on my test site and I've got Slider Revolution open in front of me. I've got one slider already created. So I'm going to come to that and I'm just going to choose the option to go in and edit the actual slides. Now, You've got a much better interface to work with this time over the previous version. You can see we have an easier sort of setup. Everything is laid out nice and easy. We have a whole range of tools that we can use just to make animating and working with our sliders much more intuitive for both us when we're developing them and for the end user that's actually interacting with the website. So what I'm going to do with this video is I'm just going to go over some of the features we've got available to us to give you an example of some of the things that you can do with your slides. Now I'm going to take a look at the animation area to start off with because this is where you're going to spend a big chunk of your time when you're working with your slides. Now I've previously created a simple slide. It's just got a background image and it's got a couple of ordinary sort of text information blocks over the top of it that are animated in. If I hit the play button, you can see exactly what it's going to look like. Nothing spectacular. So we've got our timeline, as you'd expect to see it. We can scrub along our animation. Nice and easy. We can also go to the beginning and the end of our slides and we can control where they start. So we can just drag these over, just reposition them wherever we want. We can also specify the duration, the animation, if there's one applied to this, actually takes effect. So I can just simply come to the end sort of dot I could click and hold and I can drag that as far as I want so what that's saying now is we look at the number underneath that is that the animation is going to take just over two seconds so if we play that now we should find this bottom pink block will now take longer to animate than it did previously a much slower animation so we can edit and fine-tune very very easy so I can shrink that so it takes well, next to no time, to be honest. Rewind that back. Hit play, let it run through, and we'll find that that will now fly up on screen. There we go, pretty much just flashed on screen. So that's one advantage that we have in this. It's a very easy and intuitive way of working. You can obviously control this. If you want to be perfectly specific, you can do that by simply entering the values of the start time, end time, and the actual duration and the start speed. For me, I kind of like the whole fact that you can just quickly edit that beginning and end animations just simply by dragging these, these handles. We've now got the ability to play our animation inside our browser. So we can hit play at any point and then the playhead will scrub along and show us exactly how this slide is going to look. We can also just click to jump back right back to the beginning or we can, like I say, we can scrub this along like you would in any kind of video editing package. If you want to quickly just run along to check how things look without waiting for the animations to play through and tweak and scrub. Fantastic. So there's some of the first things we can do. And that's just with the interface itself. Now we've also got all these tabs at the top on this ribbon. Styles is the default one and you can see we can do things like we can specify the typeface. Oh, sorry, we can specify the actual um, styling that's been applied to this the global styling is saved as a style sheet we've got the fonts we can use we can save these we can adjust font sizes positioning bold italic colors for me one of the biggest advantages of this new interface is the fact that we can now align things so one of the things that i found in the previous version was just a bit annoying trying to get things centered up so let's just say for example you've got things all over the shop you can select the item Hit to align into the center, do the same again, hit to align into the center, adjust if you're not spot on, align it to the center, align it to the left, to the right, very quick and easy. 
You'll also notice we've got context sensitive icons available to us now. So we can copy things, we can delete them, we can change the parameters and things like that. So if we want to change the text that's in there, we can easily do that. Instead of having to go to a little layer that used to be down here in the, underneath the actual animation area, we now actually do it directly in the block that we're working with. We can also add symbols directly into this. So let's just say, for example, I want to say, send me an email. I can insert an email icon. Space that over, hit the tick to say confirm it. And now we've got a little icon added to this. Come back and edit it. Add another one in. Update. And we now have a couple of icons in there. Great. So let's take a look at some of the other things we've got available to us. We've also got a couple of extra icons over here on the left hand side. And this is where we can start to add our layers in like we did previously. Again, that would have been down underneath the actual animation block, but now we can directly add new layers straight from this area. We can do HTML and text, image, video, button shape, all the same kind of things you did before. We've also got quick layer selection. So if we've got multiple layers, we can just quickly come down to this, select the layer that we want. We can lock it. We can turn the visibility on and off. Yeah, there's lots of little things that you can do down there. Again, all very quick and easy. We can also switch advanced styles on. So if we want to, we can adjust things like the font, the background, the border, the transform, rotation, perspective, etc. Without having to open up a new uh, sort of dialog box, which you then got to switch through and edit things. We can do it directly in the interface. And again, all very intuitive. So if you want to adjust the CSS, we can edit that. If we want to adjust the perspective or the rotation, the transform, change the background color. So we can say, well, I want to set that to be a completely different color. We can do that easily and set that. And then when we save it, it'll save that information over for us. We've got a whole range of things that we can do with the animations. We can specify how we want to animate. So we can have this fade in. We can have all the different kinds of things that we had previously. Again, it's just a simpler interface to work with. We've got legacy animations from version 4. and We've got new animations from version 5. Or we can create our own custom animations. And something we'll take a look at in future videos, how we create these things. And again, you can save that out. You can specify the easing controls that you've got on your animation. If you ease in and you ease out. You can specify the timings on those. A whole range of options are available to you. Your loop animation, I think you'll pause this if you find it a bit distracting, so you can just sort of go in and change your settings. So you can specify whether you want to loop, whether it's disable, pendulum, rotate, or other options on there. We can specify the visibility. So what we can do with this is we can say that, well, we want to use this on desktops and laptops and tablets, but we don't want to have it display on mobile phones. So we can just disable that so it won't display on there. We can specify to hide it under a certain width. And we say only on slider hover. Ooh, that sounds very complicated. Your behavior, you can make it automatically responsive. We can change alignment. We can specify the responsive offset. We can control the actions. So we can specify how we want this slide to be interacted with. So you can click and you can add things in. So we can say, well, on click or mouse enter or mouse leave, do something. So we can say that if this is clicked, we want it to go to a link. We can paste our link in, specify whether you want it to be in the same window or a new window and whether we want the link type to be a jQuery or just use the typical HTML A tag link. So if you wanted to, you could then specify something different. You could say, well, when the mouse enters, we we'll say stop video. So if we were using a video on there, we could say, well, when the mouse enters the slider, stop the video. And you could build these up so you could have different actions for different things that people do. So when the mouse enters, stop the video. When the mouse leaves, then you can say start video. So if someone clicks on it, it'll go to a link. If the mouse enters the slide, it'll pause the video. If we had a video playing in there, and when the mouse leaves, it'll play the video again for you. You can undo any of these actions just by simply hitting the minus sign to remove those from there. 
and then we've got the attributes option. So we can, if we want to sort of link this in and control this with our independent style sheets, so something that we, we create that we want to style this specific slider and we want to reference it specifically, we can call IDs up from there, we can assign classes, titles, relative um, parameters, lots of different things. So we've got a huge range of ways of working with our new sliders in version 5. I hope this little video has been giving you an insight into some of the things you can do. And what we will take a look at in a future video is how we can use some of these different features to create more interactive, more dynamic and more feature packed sliders to show on your website than just something that just animates some text on and off and just changes a couple of slides. We look at how we can do a little bit more than that. Like I say, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you an insight into some of the things you can do with this and what the uh, some of the features that version 5 offers you. If you've got any feedback or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed the video or if you enjoy any of the videos that we have on our channel. Hit the like button. And until next time, I hope you enjoy building your websites with WordPress. Take care.